It is the 16th of September, it's 7 o'clock here in the UK and it's another episode of Dream Whiskies Live. I hope you're all well and uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff actually up for you this evening, we've got a lot of things lined up. We've uh, obviously got our whiskey winners from our competition so we'll be sharing the results of those soon. Uh, we've got a new spot prize as well. I've got a little bit of news for you, uh, as in uh, I picked out a couple of things that I thought were quite interesting and I thought I'd share those with you. Plus we've got a, a sneak preview and it's, when I say a sneak preview, I'm going to show you some a new release of the Ben Riak, which we're actually going to do um, some tasting and mixology with next week, but I'm going to show you the bottles this week, had those sent to me. Um, this week. Uh, what else? Um, Jim Murray has come up with his World Whiskey of the Year Award for 2021. So I'll tell you what those are as well. What else? Got some other things. Of course, we've got our three cocktails for you this evening. Got three really nice whiskey cocktails that I think you're going to love. And of course, our Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz that's going to run throughout the whole thing. And this week, it's Cat Jam, who's done that for us, who's with us. So Cheryl first up, and uh, who else? Uh, Michael Nolan, good to see you. Kieran, good to see you. Uh, Jeff, uh, how are you? Jeff, uh, if you guys uh, check out our Facebook page, you'll notice a few cocktails that Jeff put together this week based on previous broadcasts. Uh, he made them up himself, to be entirely honest. I think they look better than mine, and I put them up on the Facebook page, so you can check them out there. Thanks for that. Jeff, Kaz, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Lubka as well. Uh, Gary, good to see your name popping up as ever. And Barry, uh, we rely on you not being there, but yes, you're right. We, we knew that. Good to see you, though. Good to see you all. Right, let's start with a little whiskey, a little dram. Remember, tell me what you've got in your glass. Um, tonight, uh, I've got, um, uh, what have I got? Yes, I've got the Glendronach Traditionally Peated. Uh, which is also quite strong, comes out 48%, so I will be taking it relatively easy with this. Let's just put a little drop in there. We'll be using this also for our three cocktails this evening, so that's what I'm drinking. Rest of you, what have you got on the go? Quick cheers. Uh, let's see how this goes down. It's delicious, actually. If you haven't tried the uh, Glen Dronach traditionally peated, if you're a real peat lover, it's clearly a peated whiskey, but it's not what I would call, you know, a peat bomb. It's not one of those that just sort of blows your head off with peat. It's a, it's a really sort of nice, soft, peaty delivery. I love it. I really love it. Uh, what you got there, Bob? Bob saying, um, you got a Pilsner. Great. Which Pilsner you got? Uh, Dave from Lincolnshire. How are you doing? Nice to see you, Dave. Uh, Michelle, hi there. Blue skies in Oakland. You say, finally, I thought you've had blue skies there, or maybe you haven't, maybe your skies have been full of, you know, you've had fires and stuff, right? So good to see you, Michelle. Uh, Bruce, how are you doing? Raspberry infused godfather. <laughs> Bruce, you are like our resident, uh, uh, obviously not appearing on the camera, but you're like our resident mixologist. Uh, so with Old Forester, 86 proof, and the Serrano, very nice. Adrian Bain, good to see you. Uh, you've got Shiraz on the go. Actually, I've noticed how you guys are all mixing it up. So w when we used to do this, it was pretty much all whiskey, but now you're just sort of spreading it out there. Simon, how are you? Good to see you there. You've got a drink on the go, Simon. Tell us what it is. Uh, Kieran's got a coffee. Kat, you've got a seven wood again. You're working your way through that bottle of seven wood. You're either working your way through that bottle of seven wood or it's another bottle of seven wood, having already worked your way through the previous one. Uh, Dave's got a Guinness with an Arbeg chaser. It's got some style there, Dave. Loving that. Uh, uh, Kaylin, is that Kaylin? Am I pronouncing that right, Kaylin? Uh, anyway, just the coffee for now. There's no such thing as just the coffee. I mean, coffee is great. We're, we're good with everything. Uh, what's that? Kilcherman from Michael. Uh, Edinburgh Golden Ale from Stuart Brewing. That's for Barry, who's not with us. And Kaz is just on the water. Kaz, remember that water put through the correct process could end up at some point being whiskey or, as it appears tonight, just water. Uh, Guinness and Jameson's uh, for Gary. So, hold, so, right, so Gary's on Guinness and Jameson's and David's on Guinness and Arbeg. Which one's better, right? Arbeg with the peat, Jameson's with the soft smoothness. I mean, both really good combinations, I think. 
All right, uh, so we've got a load of stuff up for you this evening, as always, as ever. Let me just tell you a few bits and pieces. Um, uh, first of all, let's do our whiskey winners. So whiskey competition ended last night, as ever, on a Tuesday night, with the new whiskey competition now up and running. And our week 32 winner is Ros Rosalind Bielek. Rosalind Bielek. Now, I know that Rosalind watches this, but I don't think she watches this live. Uh, Kaylin saying pronounced correctly. Good, good. I'm pleased they got that right. Uh, Rosalind, anyway, if you're watching this on record, uh, then many congratulations. Well done. You are a whiskey winner for week 32. And our Urban Bar Jigger. So you might remember I'm giving a new one of these away. Urban Bar Measure. So if you're in the UK, uh, what you get is a 2550 mil uh, tattoo version of this. These are pretty cool. I love this one, actually. Uh, if you're in the US, I'll send you a one ounce, two ounce one. So the winner of this from last week is Michael Leslie. Michael, again, big congratulations. Hope that's, uh, I hope you're on. I'm not sure if you are. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, Michael, that's yours. Uh, if you're not there, again, uh, all winners get an email from me the following day. Anyway, I'm not sure if Michael is UK or US, actually, or where he is in the world. So Michael, let us know where you are uh, when I, when I uh, write to you, and you will get the right measurement sent to you. So congratulations. This week's prize for our spot prize giveaway. Remember, if you're not a member, it's really easy. Just click on the link in the description. Go on and become a member. You can win whiskey like Rosalind has done. You can win spot prizes like Michael has done. Uh, this week, we're giving away this tasting set. We have actually given it away once before, but it's proven to be quite popular. A number of people said, why don't you do that Talisker tasting set again? So I am. So there you go. Our spot prize for this week is going to be the Talisker Tasting Set. And you enter that on our website, as you know if you're a member. And if you're not a member, then go and become a member and then enter it on our website. Okay, uh, various congrats to the winners. Uh, thank you very much all of you who are congratulating our winners. Just wanted to share this story with you. So we don't normally do news items, but I actually thought I'm just going to share a few bits of whiskey-related news with you because I think it's pretty good. Now, this story has been out there for a week or so. Uh, but maybe not all of you know this, so here we go. Um, I love this story. So a guy, uh, Matthew Robson, um, from Taunton in Somerset in England, uh, 28 years old, uh, from uh, his, uh, the day of his birth uh, until his 28th birthday, his dad bought him a bottle of Macallan 18-year-old for that year. So the first year he bought him a 1974, uh, and then he's gone all the way up to 2002. Every single year he spent over the period of, of those 28 years, £5,000, which is pretty good, I think, uh, in, in getting these, um, uh, these bottles together. His, his son, uh, Matthew Robson, was under strict instructions, don't drink them. Uh, keep them, keep them as an, as an investment, which is what he had done. It turns out that he wasn't over bothered about opening them. But now at 20 years old, he's trying to put down the deposit on the house. So he's taken the collection and put them up for auction. And it was said that they thought he would get somewhere around about £40,000 for this collection that cost his dad £5,000 as a, as a retail gift every year for 28 years. It turns out that it has actually now been sold to someone outside of the UK. They raised £44,000. How cool is that? Don't you just love that story? I mean, I'm assuming most of you who love whiskey will know about that story. But I'm just thinking, you're not all from the UK, so maybe some of you haven't heard that story. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, interesting also, I thought you should also know that Jim Murray has come up with his World Whiskey of the Year for 2021. So really interestingly, Canadian whiskey is Jim Murray's World Whiskey of the Year. It's Alberta Premium Cask Strength Rye. Alberta Premium Cask Strength Rye. Um, it's not available in the UK, by the way. If you're based in the UK, you, you can't get it. Um, uh, and it's scored on Jim Murray's uh, really discerning scale. It scored 97.5 out of 100. That is one of the very highest scoring whiskies that he has scored over the last, what, 15, 20 years. So that was number one. Number two came in second place, actually, interestingly enough, and uh, Michael, uh, I think you might be interested in this as well, that's Michael Nolan, uh, is the Stag Junior Barrel Proof. So um, Michael Nolan won our whiskey competition a couple of months back, and we've got the Stag Junior Barrel Proof 
in our um, Whiskey Prize gallery. That's what Michael chose. Uh, and so I don't know if you've got any left, actually, Michael. You still got it? Uh, let us know. Uh, have you drunk it all? I remember you sent me a photo uh, within about sort of 24 hours of receiving it, and it already had dropped quite a bit in the barrel since you got hold of it. Uh, but that was number two this year, the Stag Junior. And the and third place went to Paul John Indian Whiskey, uh, Mithuna, Mithuna as well. So pretty cool. Yeah, Gary, brilliant investment, right? I don't know about you, but I've often thought about the idea. I mean, my kids are all adults and grown up and all the rest of it, but I often thought about the idea in retrospect, wouldn't it be good if I'd have bought something every year on their, on their birthdays? I, I, I mean, I did buy stuff on their birthdays. I just drank it. That's the problem. Uh, um, Michael's saying he's still got some. Good. Number two for 2021. All right. As ever, you all know, before we get into the cocktails, um, we have our Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz, uh, which has been running now for quite some time and for also for a number of weeks. Uh, the winner from the previous week has set the questions for next week. So this week's questions have been set by last week's winner, Cat Jam. Uh, Cat, you still owe me a photograph so I can get you up in the gallery then. Uh, but Cat's come up with some uh, really good questions. And we're going to have the first three questions now before we go into our first cocktail of the evening. So as ever, the first three questions are going to be anagrams. Get yourself uh, some paper and a pen or a pencil. I'll just give you a moment or two while I have another little drop of my Glendronach traditionally peated. Uh, and then we will get into this. So grab away. All right. So three anagrams. You need to work out the anagrams. They are either whiskies or whiskey distilleries. Anagram number one. By the way, remember, Cheryl will be putting these up in the comments afterwards. So if you don't write them down, you don't get them com completely. They will be in the comments after, after I've uh, read them out here. So uh, anagram number one is honeyed orc slum. Honeyed orc slum. So honeyed is H-O-N-E-Y-E-D. Orc is O-R-K and slum is S-L-U-M. Honeyed orc slum. What whiskey or whiskey distillery is that anagram? These are very good, by the way, Cat Jam. Very good indeed. In fact, number three, genius. Absolute genius how you came up with that one. Absolutely love it. Uh, number two is Lear Then Ghost. Lear Then Ghost. So it's Lear, L double -E, e R, then T H E N. And ghost, G H O S T. Lear, then ghost. That's number two. What whiskey or whiskey distillery is that? Gary, what are you saying there? Uh, I bought myself the Game of Thrones collection, hoping it will improve in value. Well, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? Because the Game of Thrones collection, uh, at the moment, because Diageo produced so many of them, I think it's probably just going to sort of hold its value. I mean, if you look on the auction sites, it seems to be getting what it's selling for, I think. Oh, I haven't given the third one yet, uh, Cheryl Martin, who's come up too fast with uh, the, uh, the questions. Never mind, I'll give you the third one. Uh, but I reckon over time, Gary, what's going to happen is they're going to get lost, people are going to drink them, the usual thing, and I reckon it will have some value, uh, no doubt. I mean, you know, it's definitely not going to go down anyway, because it seems that whiskey seems to just be spiraling. Okay, so Cheryl's already put up the first three questions, but I will give you question number three. And that is enteric fart, enteric fart. So it's E-N-T-E-R-I-C, and then fart, F-A-R-T. Good job there, Cat Jam. Uh, if you guys know what enteric means, uh, which um, is not necessarily the case, but uh, it's worth looking it up because then you'll see what a brilliant anagram that is. Uh, enteric fart. So those are questions one, two, and three. And now it's time for us to get into our first cocktail of the evening. So the first cocktail is this. I'm going to do something called a Whiskey Green Park. And the reason why I'm doing this is actually not because of whiskey, but um, uh, I got uh, sent a bottle of Portobello Gin, Old Tom Gin, uh, last week. Uh, this is it. I know this is a whiskey show, but this is the one, Portobello Road. Uh, Portobello do, um, 
Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Yes, that third one is a real gas, definitely. Um, uh, where was I? Yes, so Portobello, uh, Portobello Road Gin, fabulous gins. Uh, they make uh, actually quite a range of, of, of different nuanced style gins. But this is an old Tom gin, and I was trying to test it out. And I thought, right, if I'm going to test it, I need to test it with a cocktail um, that, that uh, traditionally would use old Tom gin. So if you pop in, Old Tom Gin cocktails into Google, what you'll get is hundreds of recipes where actually they are just traditional gin cocktail recipes, but people have used Old Tom Gin in its place. Um, but there are a number of cocktails which are specifically, or were originally and specifically invented for Old Tom Gin. And one of them is called a Green Park. And the Green Park was invented at the American Bar at the Savoy Hotel in London. And I think it was around 2011, so it's not a particularly old cocktail, but the head bartender there was uh, inventing a range of cocktails and naming them after uh, key London landmarks and key London parks. Uh, so he did one called Hyde Park, for example, um, and, uh, and this one called Green Park. Now, as an old Tom Gin cocktail, it's superb, but I then thought, wonder if I can do a whiskey version for you guys, and that's what I'm going to do now. This is superb as well. Uh, and this is how you go. So first things first, take your shaker. Actually, I'm going to put it in here, but then I'm going to tip it in here to do something else with it. Uh, but I want you to see what I put in first. Of so take your shaker, and then over here, I've got some fresh basil. And uh, I'm going to take, um, it's wilted slightly under the lights, but it's still really fragrant and uh, lovely. So I'm going to take one, two, three, four, uh, five, six really decent basil leaves. And, uh, and you will know if you use fresh basil how fragrant it is and just, just already, all I can smell around here is that fresh barrel, basil. Okay, next things. Um, I'm gonna take a lemon, uh, voila, and I'm gonna cut the lemon in half. I'm gonna squeeze the juice of this whole lemon. So uh, what I want is about a UK shot, so 25 ml, and this is a small lemon, so I reckon it's gonna be all of that. So let me give that a squeeze in there. That's good. And then the same thing with the other half. Let's get that in as well. That's very good. Now ordinarily, when I use things like fresh herbs in cocktails, what I tend to do, let me just get the rest of that in there. What I tend to do is muddle the fresh herbs to release the flavor and release the oils. But we're not gonna be muddling this one, uh, which will become clear in just a second. Now, before we get to that point, uh, I'm going to, actually, I might just get a slightly bigger glass for this. Let's just pop that there. I've got an egg here. I want the egg white from this, so I'm just gonna crack the egg on the side. Try and be as uh, gentle as possible. There we go. Uh, always think it doesn't look the most appetizing thing when you do that, but actually, that's what we need in there. Let's just give my hands a little rinse. Okay, so at the moment we've got egg white, lemon juice, six basil leaves. Now what I want to do is add our whiskey, and I'm going to put 50 ml of our traditionally peated Glendronach in there. Now, you don't have to do this with a peated whiskey. In fact, it, it probably works equally as well with a, a non-peated, a nice Speyside whiskey, something like that. But I actually quite like it with this. Uh, now I'm going to take some of these. Uh, I need to just cover that. Light, there you go. Can you see that? There you go, keep the light off of it. So these are Fee Brothers, but more importantly, celery bitters. And I'm gonna put three dashes of celery bitters in there. So one, two, three. And then finally, we need something to sweeten it because at the moment, this is looking like a sour style drink. So I'm taking some sugar. I've got some sugar syrup uh, and I'm gonna put in about 10 to 12 ml of sugar syrup. Just doing that by eye, five, it's about 10. Okay, that's good. All right, so I used the glass so that you could see what was going on, but I'm actually going to transfer that into the can now for the moment. Let's just put that to the side. Because instead of muddling this, I'm actually gonna blitz it. I'm gonna take a hand blender and I'm gonna whiz it for a couple of seconds. Here's my hand blender, or should I say electric hand blender. And I'm gonna blitz everything that's in there. So I'm gonna blitz the basil up, the egg whites, by whizzing the egg whites, it's going to help the egg whites to emulsify and froth up as well. I'm going to do all this before 
we shake it. So let's get this in there. <laughs> Only about five, six seconds. Here we go. I'm just going to shake that out. Give that one more whiz. <laughs> Whoa. <Well, laughs> all right. That's good. Let's shake that off. Let's remove that. Get that onto my drainer. That's good. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to shake this traditionally. So I'm going to get some ice into here. There we are. Going to get my glass back. And now we're going to give this a nice shake. So here we go. All right, now I'm going to pop it into this, uh, which is what we call a... Um, uh, a Calabrese martini and I'm going to double strain it and the reason why I'm double straining it is because obviously there are loads of tiny little bits of basil leaf floating around I don't want those to come through I want the egg white to come through I want the drink to come through I want all the flavor from the basil to come through but I don't want those leaves so this double strain is going to help me catch all of those but this is, and I'm not sure if you can tell from looking at it on the screen, but so smooth, incredibly silky. It really is amazing how the blitzing of all of the ingredients, including the egg white, let's bring that over there. Let's just pop this down here for a second. Really helps and transforms this drink. So let me see, you should be able to pick up, let me get that a little bit closer for you. Really nice, smooth, green colour. And that green has all come from the basil that we have whizzed into this. Uh, we're getting egg white on the surface, but softer and smoother than anything that you would get in, in, uh, in um, uh, when, sorry, not in, but when you shake a cocktail. So when you shake a cocktail, it's always a bit of a challenge to get that egg white really frothed and coming to the surface. But incredibly smooth, incredibly flavoursome, wonderfully aromatic. And then finally... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let me see, I'm going to take some small basil leaves. There we go. Let's take those off of there. And I'm just going to lay those in the middle on the surface of the drink. There we go. There we are. And that is our whiskey. I wonder if you can see that. That is our whiskey green park cocktail. You've got to try this. Right, I'm just going to put that to the side uh, because, as you know, we have a photographer that's going to take some pictures. So let's pop that there. Um, what we got here? Uh, Bruce is saying you've got that same blender. It works great for drinks. Yeah, works absolutely fabulous for drinks. Uh, Kat saying sounds delicious. Dave saying it looks great. Actually, it really does look great. I would have liked to have somehow put it close to the camera, but I, I would have to tip it for you to see it from above. Uh, but it does look amazing and when you drink it, wow, smooth as anything, real sort of, obviously you get the idea that it's a sour style cocktail, uh, but, um, but gorgeous really and uh, yeah, uh, uh, let me know how you get and I always say this to you by the way, if you are making up these cocktails and obviously uh, uh, an example is Jeff made up some cocktails, sent me some pictures through, really love to see what you're doing, uh, let me know, let me know how it goes, uh, uh, what are you saying Bruce, let's see if that one comes back. Let's see. Let's see if that happens indeed. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Okay, so look, um, let's get back into our Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz. We've got questions four, five, and six coming up now. And uh, okay, as you're saying, looks and sounds really good. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it definitely just got nicked. It's gone, yeah, everyone say it's gone. <laughs> That's what happens. Honestly, around here, you, you've got to you've got to chain yourself to your glass if you want to keep your you want to keep your drink. I didn't even get a chance to taste it myself, did I? You know, now we're thinking about it. All right, uh, question number four in our whiskey geek of the week quiz. Remember, questions courtesy of Cat Jam. Uh, number four. So Glenfiddich bottles are triangular, and that is to represent the three pillars of whiskey making. Okay, so famously. Their triangle bottles represent the three pillars of whiskey making. What I want to know is, or what Cat wants to know is, what are those three pillars? And I will give you a point for each, okay? So there are three pillars of whiskey making. What are those three pillars? 
Uh, actually, this whole quiz is going to be out at 16 tonight because there's a couple of other multiple, uh, multiple point questions as well. So that was question number four. Mm. Just uh, while you guys are doing that, just have a little rinse of my strainer, which I'm going to need in the next spot. That's good. All right, question number five. Question number five. Um, John Jameson, that's the founder of Jameson's Irish Whiskey. Where was he from? Okay, where was he from? In other words, where was he born? Where was he from? John Jameson. Uh, it might be obvious, might not be obvious. There you go. John Jameson, the founder of Jameson's Irish Whiskey, was from where? That's question number five. Question number six. Now, if you don't know about this guy, You've got to check him out. I mean, it's not like I've got millions of you watching this and, you know, I'm being sort of philanthropic by sort of sharing some of the fans that we have at Dream Whiskies and saying, go and check out this guy because he's got a huge audience. Uh, but uh, the question is this. Which whiskey reviewer broadcasts from his Manx Bothy in the Isle of Man? Okay, so which whiskey reviewer broadcast from his Manx Bothy in the Isle of Man. Obviously, when we get round to the answers, I'll tell you who that person is. Uh, and if you've never seen him, um, I've, obviously I've given you a clue now because I've said him uh, or her, but him. Okay, I've given that a bit away. But if you've never seen him, uh, I, I, I suggest you go and check him out. Uh, really entertaining, I think. Uh, Bruce, what you're saying, you need to prank Cheryl, make a drink with vinegar. <laughs> okay, I'll... Uh, Look, the thing is, right, I can do that, can't I? I can make a drink of vinegar and you're halfway around the world. So when she's, you know, pissed about that, then I'm the one that's going to get it. And, I, you know, me saying, Bruce told me to do it. I don't think that's going to wash. But maybe I should just do that anyway. <laughs> All right, so those are questions four, five, and six. Um, look, I wanted to give you a little bit of a sneak peek. Um, some of you a few weeks ago saw that we were joined briefly by a guy called Tim, and Tim put up actually a bottle of creme de cacao as an extra bonus prize last week, uh, which um, went to Steve, and uh, I should say is on its way to Steve, because it had to come to me and then go to him. Uh, but uh, um, so, so Tim is someone that, I don't think he's on tonight, I'm pretty sure he's, he's not on, but uh, Tim is someone that is involved in more brands than just the creme de cacao and the, uh, the Giffard liqueurs, and that includes quite a few of the whiskies that I use. And, um, and he sent me uh, the new Ben Riac branding, right? So if you're not quite sure what the Ben Riac branding has looked like for the last however long, there it is, okay? That's what the Ben Riac bottles have looked like for, well, up until this week. Uh, but now they look like this. So I'm going to show you what they look like, and then next week we're actually going to get them out, we're going to taste them, and, uh, and I'm also going to use them for the cocktails as well. But here we go. So, first things first. We've got this one here, the Curiositas, is, oh, now looks like that. How cool is that? So this is what they now call the Smoky 10. Same whiskey, pretty sure it's the same whiskey in the bottle, but this is the Smoky 10. In here, what we got is the original 10. So in other words, the whiskies that found in the Kuros Tass bottle and the 10 year old bottle are now looking like this. I don't know how well you can see. Uh, again, uh, let's do that. Just try and hide the light here. There you go, I think that's a bit better. I don't know about you, I love, I absolutely love the new packaging and the new branding. Um, let me know your thoughts, let me know what you think. Um, but what they've also done is this, let me pop these back, okay, so that's the original. Uh, I'm not sure if we taste every one of these next week, because uh, I might not make it through, but there we go. They have now added to their core range uh, two others. So we've now got the 12, so they've now got a 12 year old, oh, let's get that out. Again, branding's, uh, branding's the same. Uh, by the way, uh, of the other two, uh, we've got them still packaged at 43 and, is that right? Yeah, 43 and 46. Uh, these are both packaged, uh, I say packaged, bottled at 46%. So this is now the 12, uh, which is, there you go. So I have to keep doing that. 
because uh, I've noticed that uh, the light is bleaching things out. So there we go, it's the 12. And then they've also done a smoky 12 as well. So there's the heated version. Uh, and these, of course, are whiskies that we haven't tried at all. So I thought we could try them together next week. When I say together, what I mean is I'll try them and you guys can watch me enjoy them. Uh, but I will try and explain to you what they taste like. I, will, I, I am, however, going to give you just a little bit of um, chat off, off of the, the website um, describing what we've got here. So let me just give you that now before we move on to our next cocktail. So this is what they said. So this has come from uh, uh, Dr. Rachel Barry. So Dr. Rachel Barry is the master distiller, the master blender um, uh, at Ben React. Oh, it's come back. Let's just have a quick taste, make sure it's as delicious as... Mmm. Such a cracking cocktail. Um, okay, so in the original tin, in the new original tin, a more richly flavoured, rounded malt character might be discerned, whilst the 12 balances richly sherried malt with added layers of fruit complexity, reaching a pinnacle at 12 years old. The new Smoky Tin and Smoky 12 explore the sweet smokiness of Bimriac, enriched through innovative combinations of rum, virgin oak and masala casks interwoven with more traditional bourbon and sherry. So they've really mixed up their casks here. Um, I'm actually looking forward to it and, and I'm, I'm going to not taste them before next week. So I will do this with you guys. Um, Mike, what are you saying? Sounds like bloody cruelty to me, Paul. What are you talking about? Uh, um, Bruce's idea of vinegar. Yeah, I think you're right. Cheryl hasn't drunk much of that one. No, I, I, I'm going to tell you, Cheryl's... Um, she was just sort of hanging back from killing the cocktails at the moment, uh, trying to sort of uh, focus her mind on things like uh, photography and, and what have you. Uh, so that one's come back to me. Also, I know that that's not her style of drink as well. Uh, but what do you think? The Ben React looks interesting. I love the look. I love the new bottle. I think it definitely brings it up to date. But really looking forward to uh, messing around with them and, you know, tasting them with you guys next week. All right. Let's go on to another cocktail. So this cocktail is called, <laughs> this cocktail is called uh, Never Too Slow, okay? Never Too Slow. Uh, oh, Michael, you can play, <laughs> what are you saying? Cat Jam, can we all taste them? How can we do that? I mean, that's, a, that's a kind of good idea, isn't it? It's, it's something that I wanted to explore with you, um, but I, I sort of need a minimum of you to do it in order for us to do it. And what I mean is this, is that I, I can potentially um, look at how we can have tastings together where I can get the whiskies out to you guys, and then we can have tasting sessions together online, right? So... That is an option for us. The only, the only thing is, is that if there's only sort of half a dozen of us doing it, I just can't do it because financially it just won't work for me. I'm going to end up sort of burning holes in my pocket. Um, uh, but I would be really interested in doing that. What I might do is send out some kind of survey and just find out how many of you want to do it. And if there's enough of us, Cat Jam, then, then we can actually look at seeing how we do that. But obviously next week, I'm going to have to drink it on my own, and I'll just sort of share my experience. Michael's going, yes, good. All right, Michael. I will, I, I will, send, I will send an email out to you all, um, and then just please respond. Let me know where you are with this. If we've got enough numbers, we can definitely look at trying to make that work. All right, cocktail, cocktail, cocktail. So uh, what did I call this? I think I called this a, uh, a never too slow, never too slow. All right. Um, Okay, yes, I've just remembered something that I've forgotten, hence my pause. So we're going to make now a cocktail which combines quite a lot of fruit flavours. And I know we've done that before with different styles of cocktail, but this one actually works really quite nicely. So it's going to go in this old-fashioned glass, which actually looks like a sort of cafe water glass. It's one of those things that uh, I'm, I'm really torn on the style of this. I can't decide whether it looks like a cocktail glass or not. Uh, but we're going to be using it anyway. So that's going to go there. That's very good. Uh, and we're going to start, obviously, by taking our shake. And the first thing that I'm going to get in is our whiskey. So we're going to be using the same traditionally peated whiskey. And I'm going to be putting in 35 ml. So let's get a 35 ml shot. There we are. 
That's very nice. Good. So we've got our whiskey in. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some slow gin. So slow gin is, is, is not a distilled flavor. It's more like a macerated flavor. Uh, a lot of people refer to this as a liqueur rather than a spirit. I guess it really depends on how strong it is. This one's at 26%, so that tells you all of that. I'm going to put in 25 ml of our slow gin. And I guess some of you are familiar with slows having probably picked and made your own slow gin. Just that most people, when they make their own slow gin at home, they're taking slows that they've picked from, from a, a, a bush nearby, they're pricking the slows, they're putting it into a jar, they then add the gin, probably add a load of sugar, and they make their own slow gin. Difference is the gin they're adding is probably around about 40% alcohol, so homemade slow gin often tends to be much stronger than the sort of stuff that you would buy from a, uh, a distiller or a, a manufacturer. All right, nevertheless, we got our slow gin, we got our whiskey in there. Now I'm going to add some creme de mûre. So another bush where we picked some berries. Creme de mûre is a blackberry liqueur. And less this time, I'm going to put in 15 ml of the creme de mûre. Uh, it's quite deep and rich and certainly changes the color of our drink. And now we've got something really quite fruity. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cut the flavor a little bit. Otherwise, it's going to be over sweet, especially as I have something sweet to add again to it. So I'm going to take this lime and I'm going to squeeze the juice of the whole lime into our mixing glass. So let's get that. There we are. And uh, give that a good squeeze. I found recently actually all the fruit that I've been buying, so all the citrus fruit that I've been buying, has been really quite succulent and fruity and juicy. Getting a load of juice off of this stuff. Um, uh, I guess, I don't know, maybe it's got something, I was going to say, maybe it's got something to do with the extraordinarily long summer that we've had, but I mean, that's the summer we've had in the UK, and we don't really grow limes in the UK, do we? So that's a completely ridiculous and pointless thing to say. Okay, so we've got our lime, got our creme de mûre, we've got our slow gin, obviously we've got our whiskey, and now I'm going to add some grenadine, again, there's a bit more sweetness, but trust me, this is sweet, this is fruity, but the lime really cuts it well. And so I'm putting in around about 5 to 10 mil. There we go. There we go. What are you guys saying? Cheryl's put up the questions. Uh, it's not really for me. I still need to take some pictures. Steve, there you go. So sorry I'm late. Uh, got a, what you got? Berry Brothers and Rudd Whiskey on the go tonight. Gorgeous, lovely. Brilliant. Good job, Steve. All right. So we got all of our flavors in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some ice as ever and get a scoop of ice into my shaker. I'm going to put some new fresh ice into our glass as well. Just get a couple more of those. Let's do that. There we are. And then we will give this a nice little shake as well. So let's put that in place and shake it up. All right. Shaken very nicely. Let's take our strainer. No double straining this time. There we go. I think you can probably see the sort of flavors that are going to come through this drink. You know, it, it's just from its color, you can tell that it's a, a really fruity uh, a sort of berry concoction. I mean, obviously, you know what the ingredients are, but those berry fruit flavors are, are really quite distinctive. And I think they often distinguish themselves from those more uh, sort of Caribbean style or tiki style cocktails where you have much more fleshy fruits in there. Now the garnish for this really simple, I'm going to take a lime and I've got a lime zester here and I'm just going to drag uh, my zester over it and drop a few bits of lime zest on the surface of the drink. And this is really as much for aroma as it is for anything else. And there we go. So that is what we call our never too slow. Let me just have a little drink. It's gorgeous, really fruity, incredibly summery cocktail, actually. Uh, and I know we're getting towards the end of our summer, but actually this week we've got like an Indian summer type heat wave going on here in the UK. So this is perfect for right now. And there you go. Let's pop that over there. Good. Oh, wow. Shall I show? Okay. Check this out. Shell was getting very, very artistic with the photography. This is the previous uh, picture. Uh, we'll put, I'll put this up on the Facebook page afterwards. Check that out. 
How cool does that look? That looks like a front cover photograph, don't you think? Don't you think? How cool is that? Give us some thumbs up if you like that. Gary's saying, wow, looks great, but I'm not sure if you mean this or if you mean that. Uh, but yeah, okay. That's amazing. Um, okay, what's going on here? Uh, okay, I've missed a few of you here. Um, Gary, uh, good to know Steve. I have a bottle of unopened sherry. Okay, uh, yeah, the Berry Brothers is cool. Uh, Mr. Last Ingredients is Barry. Uh, Cass saying beautiful colour. Oh, thank you, Michael, has given Barry an answer there. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I know that you're talking to each other, but uh, Steve, just uh, interested in what you're saying there. Uh, blended, slightly peaty one, gorgeous, quite sweet, took a punt in it without knowing. That sounds good, actually. I think I could go and get myself a bottle of that. Wow, well, looks great. Beautiful photograph, says Dave. Uh, nice picture, says Bruce. Big thumbs up from Cat Jam. That is quite a cool photograph, I have to say. I have to say, it has already been said. All right, good. We have one more cocktail coming up for you a little bit later on. Uh, let's get back into our quiz. So we are now up to questions seven, eight, and nine of our Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz. Remember, if you win the Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz uh, without cheating, then you send me a picture and we get you up on our Whiskey Geek gallery. Uh, Gary saying that's a great pick, Cheryl. Kaz is saying fabulous picture, Cheryl. Brilliant. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Cheryl will answer you soon, by the way. She's obviously just sort of dropped her, her device while she's gone and taken some other photographs, so she'll come back to you guys shortly. At seven, here we go. Which country produces whiskey peated with sheep dung? Okay, so which country produces whiskey peated with sheep dung? And for an extra point, give us the name of the whiskey. All right, so two points up for grabs here. So which country produces whiskey that is peated using sheep dung? And then for an extra point, tell us what that whiskey is. All right. These, I, I really, you know what? I obviously looked at these questions and uh, how I didn't see the theme here for these three questions, uh, Kat. I don't know where my head was at, but it's, it's, now I'm reading them out again. They're, they're sort of plainly obvious. Um, all right. Uh, question number eight. Which sheep-related whiskey uh, is matured in Pinot Noir casks? Okay, so which sheep-related whiskey is matured in Pinot Noir casks? That is question number eight. Mm. Loving that. Here we go. Question nine, question nine. Uh, which sheepishly named whiskey, how did I miss that theme? How did I miss that, right? Which sheepishly named whiskey is a blend of 16 single malts aged between 8 and 20 years. So a blend of 16 single malts aged between 8 and 20 years. You know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of confusion really about, uh, not the difference between a single malt and a blended, but the idea that in many people's minds, blended means lower quality uh, and single malt means higher quality. Um, but it's not necessarily the case. And the, the, way that I, the way that I say this is that if you have a great steak on its own, let's imagine a steak on its own is like a single malt. So the steak could be a fabulous piece of steak. By the way, if you're vegetarian or vegan, I apologize for using this analogy. It's just an easy one to use, right? So you've got a steak, that's your single malt. It could be amazing, it could be not so amazing, right? But there's your steak. However, give that steak to a great chef with other complementary ingredients, maybe other bits and pieces that will, will benefit that steak, and that chef will turn it into a blend of ingredients that may be more delicious than the steak on its own could have been, right? And that's what a master blender or a master distiller will do with a whole range of different whiskies to blend them together to actually get the, uh, some of the parts to be greater than the whole. I think that's how the phrase goes. Uh, so, um, I, I, listen, I know that most of you watching this, uh, you know your whiskies, you know what I'm talking about. But I'm just sort of putting that out there because for a lot of people, they just make the assumption that if it's blended, it's not as good. 
I actually had a, uh, a bit of a whiskey drinking night with my father-in-law um, just, just a, a few short days ago. And we had three really fantastic blended whiskies, including uh, we, we, uh, we had a, a little drop of the Johnny Walker of Blue Label George V, uh, which is really gorgeous, actually. I, I've seen some reviews where people have been really quite scathing, but, you know, for me, sensational. Uh, plus another couple of uh, uh, really amazing whiskies, and, and, you know, I have to say, uh, they can often be much, much better. Anyway, I've gone on about that. And the reason why I went on about it is because of Kat's question, really, that idea that a blend of 16 single malts, is that going to be better than a blend, uh, than a single single malt? Uh, and I think the answer could be yes, maybe. Or maybe not. That's the beauty of it, isn't it? All right, okay, let's go. Let's move on. found myself waffling on and wandering a little bit. Cheryl's put the questions up there. Uh, what, Steve, what you said, I love a blend of whiskey, Johnny Walker 18, yes, absolutely, uh, also love my scallywag, one of my faves, like to hear it, that's good. All right, our last one of this evening, I call this a Japanese clog, right, and the reason why I call it a Japanese clog is that it is, what have I lost, what have I lost, okay, the reason why I call it a Japanese clog is because it is inspired by a drink called a Japanese slipper, but it's really quite different to that. I've also taken some kind of inspiration also from the, the pina colada. I'm really bringing together a few, just a few of my favorite ingredients. It turns out that it works really, really well. So we're gonna put it into this gorgeous flute glass. It's not actually a flute, it's more like a sort of cross breed. It's like a flute has got together with a long stem wine glass and you've got this sort of uh, uh, senashi. Let me drink this as nobody is paying any attention to it. Mmm. Loving that. Yeah, so I'm going to put it in there. Uh, I think this is quite a refined glass to put it in. I'm also going to shake it in this. This is uh, my three-piece shaker. And um, funnily enough, uh, uh, along the lines of a short sort of text conversation I also had with Jeff Canis, uh, people think of the three-piece shaker as very much a domestic shaker and the two-piece, the one that I normally use, the Boston shaker, is a professional one. And I would say that's true in the UK and that's true in the United States for sure. And it's probably true through many countries throughout Central, Central and even Eastern Europe. We go further east and, uh, and, and also south, uh, so you find yourself in uh, uh, sort of Southeast Asia especially places like Japan, they all use these sort of three-piece shakers. And I've mentioned that to you before, and uh, I just thought we'd use it tonight because I'm calling this a Japanese clog. So here we go. Put the ingredients in here, really quite a simple combination. So I'm gonna start with our whiskey, and I'm gonna put in a full 50 ml of our whiskey. There we go. Very nice. Uh, and then I'm going to add some pineapple juice. So pineapple juice is our juice for this. Let me just give this a little stir. Because pineapple juice tends to separate very quickly. So there we go. All right. So I'm going to put in 100 ml of pineapple juice. There we are. And some more. There we go. That's our pineapple juice. Then the whole Japanese thing for me, especially with a Japanese slipper or those sort of drinks, come back to an ingredient I've used a number of times over the last couple of months, but I just love it. Uh, and I'm getting a little bit, yes, I'm getting a little bit down on this, so I might have to find another bottle. Uh, and I'm going to put in 30 ml of our melon liqueur. This is a gorgeous, really fra uh, unbelievably fragrant melon liqueur using musk melon, I think, uh, from Jibar. Gorgeous. And then finally, I'm going to use another ingredient that I've used a couple of times, and I've told you about this before. It's a coconut cream, but it's, it's not a coconut cream like the, like the cans of coconut cream or coconut milk that you buy in a supermarket and you put into Asian cuisine. This is Coco Lopez, what they call cream of coconut. It's like a paste, really. In fact, if I show you, let me just again cover up there, you can see it's really quite thick. It's very sweet. It has been developed specifically for cocktails, specifically for cocktails. 
Um, and so that's what we are using here. I'm going to do this by eye, but I want to put in around about a UK shot, so 25 mil, a little bit more. There we go. That is good. Actually, let me just shake that off in there. Very nice. All right, so we've got our ingredients in. All very good. I'm going to add ice to our shaker, and then I'm going to give it a shake in our Japanese-style shaker. So let's get some ice in there. There we are. It's funny, these things feel so, so kind of weeny, really. So let's get that on the top. That's good. And then... Yeah, and now we go with our little Japanese shake. All right. Now the beauty of these three piece is that strain. All you have to do is just take the cap off the top, and we can strain straight from our shaker. And there we go. Let's bring that in. Very nice. Perfect. And it comes just up to within a short little mouthful of the top of the glass. Now, I would actually garnish this with a raspberry. It turns out that Cheryl and I ended up eating all the raspberries, forgetting that I wanted to use them for garnish uh, this evening. So instead, I've got a lime here. I'm just going to put a little lip of lime over the edge like so and there we go that is our Japanese clog our Japanese clog right what are you talking to me about everybody uh, Johnny Wilkins 18 year old has 18 18 year old whiskies blended I believe I don't know if that's I don't know if that's the truth or not Steve um, I can definitely check that out uh, I did quite a bit of work with Diageo and Johnny Walker a few years ago, and um, I don't remember that, but that doesn't mean it's not the truth. That's an interesting fact, if it is the truth. Uh, Kevin, what's going on? Hi. Uh, late, but here now. Good to see you. Package has arrived. Thanks. Picture will follow. Good man. Pleased to hear it. Of course, Kevin won uh, a beautiful bottle of whiskey last week, didn't he? Avril, on my way home, will be mixing a cocktail after dinner. Avril, send us a picture. Um, what's this? Uh, I'm, uh, what's Michael? I'm finding question eight sheep connection rather tenuous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. You have to complain to Cat about that. Uh, Bob, don't count too many sheep questions. <laughs> yeah, because what's going to happen, right? If we get too many of those, does it actually work? Do you start to drop off? Uh, okay. Let me just pop this one over here, like so. Uh, let's bring this one back up, which I have on the go. Mm. Still loving that. Uh, and let's get down to the business end of our broadcast, everyone. So, we got the last few questions of our Whiskey Geek. Uh, and then, um, oh yeah, I found that's quite an interesting one. And then uh, we're going to go through the answers and then we'll find out uh, who our Whiskey Geek of the Week is uh, for this week. So, question 10. There's two points up for grabs here. Uh, uh, up for grabs here, yes. Okay, so question 10 is, uh, which Macallan is James Bond's favourite? Okay, so he references this particular Macallan. And then, can you name the film where he tried to shoot it off of someone's head? Okay, so uh, two-part question. Which Macallan... Uh, listen, uh, just to help you with this a little bit, I think, just in case you're thinking, where am I going with this? We're looking for a year, okay? So which year, McAllen, is James Bond's favourite? And then the bonus for this uh, extra point is, can you name the film where he tried to shoot it off of someone's head? Okay, that was question 10. Question 11. Question 11. Uh, which whiskey? was recommended by Charles Dickens. Now, now this is, I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit more than, than uh, uh, Kat has given us here in the question. So, so famously, Charles Dickens wrote a letter uh, to a friend and, uh, uh, and recommended Glenlivet. And in actual fact, in some old bottles of Glenlivet 12-year-old, they print that ex uh, excerpt from the letter on the back. 
uh, which you can find. In fact, I, I did find one that was at auction recently. It didn't go for very much money, but it was just quite an interesting one to have. Not, I didn't get it, by the way, but I'm just saying it was an interesting one to have. So, which whiskey was recommended by Charles Dickens? Um, this is what it said, by the way, in the letter. Actually, no, maybe what I should do is read out the letter uh, when I give you the answer in a second. Okay. And question 12, question 12. I want to know which distillery produces the Dragon Range. Okay, which distillery produces the Dragon Range? Uh, Steve, my apologies, it has up to 18 whiskies blended. Just read it on the, just read it on the label. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But actually, if you think about it, Steve, if it did have 18, 18 year olds, well, I reckon it might cost a few more pennies, don't you? Now we mention it, now we think about it. All right. Okay, so that's it, 12 questions. Uh, there is a total of 16 points up for grabs in our Whiskey Geek of the Week competition for this week. Um, uh, Cheryl, I don't know if Cheryl's put up questions uh, 10, 11, and 12 yet. Uh, um, I think I told you this uh, last week, but we found out that my view of your comments is behind your view of the comments that come up. In other words, for some reason, as the broadcaster, I seem to get them way behind when you actually see them or you actually put them on. So sorry if it seems that I take quite a while to react to your comments, but that might also include the fact that Cheryl has already put up the uh, questions 10, 11, 12, but I can't see them just yet. Anyway, give her a chance to do that. Uh, I'm going to go back down to question one, and I'm going to start to give you the answer. Oh, there you go. Questions up from Cheryl there. Good. Mm-hmm. Okie dokie. So, answers. Get your pen ready and see who this week's Whiskey Geek of the Week is. So, uh, question one was uh, anagram. And it was honeyed orc slum, honeyed orc slum. We were looking for monkey shoulder, monkey shoulder. So that was question one. If you've got monkey shoulder, give yourself one point. Question two, anagram again. We had Lear, then ghost. Lear, then ghost. We were looking for the Glenrothes, the Glenrothes. Uh, and again, if you've got the Glenrothes, give yourself a point. And then I think... Without doubt, question three, the anagram of the year. If there was an award cat for most inspired anagram, it is enteric fart. Enteric fart, and that is fetican. We're looking for fetican. Uh, and that is another point if you got that. So uh, three points up for grabs for questions one, two, and three. Okay, question number four. So I said there were actually three answers to question number four. You can have a point for each if you get them. So the question was, Glenfiddich bottles are triangular, and the triangle shape is to represent the three pillars of whiskey making. What are those three pillars of whiskey making? Well, they are air, water, barley. Air, water, barley. You get one point for each one of those. What are you saying, Bob? Uh, Fedkan was one of the most smuggled during Prohibition. Is that right? Is that right? That's interesting. How do they know that, I wonder? I wonder how they know that. I mean, it's, it's uh, yeah, how do they know that? Because I'm thinking at the time, because it's prohibition, how, how do they keep records? But maybe, uh, maybe it's just, uh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe a sense that people felt that that was the whiskey that was all over the place. Uh, Steve saying some cracking noise there. Yeah, I agree. Uh, five, John Jameson, uh, the founder of Jameson's Irish Whiskey was from where? Where was he from? Scotland. Scotland. Did you know that? He was from Scotland. That was question five. Question six. Uh, I said that I'd tell you who this guy was, uh, but question six is which whiskey reviewer broadcasts from his Manx Bothy in the Isle of Man? Uh, and he's called Ralphie. Ralphie. Uh, and if you haven't seen him, <laughs> You've got to check him out, right? Uh, I love this guy. He's just sitting in this sort of little old cow shed, really. Uh, and, I mean, he's been doing it for years. Um, and he's got a really big following. He's on YouTube. That's where you find him. Uh, uh, and he, I just find him really 
interesting to listen to. Uh, he's, he's just got, he's got great knowledge, he's got great opinions. He's kind of funny, really, I think. Uh, but it's Ralphie. So if you've got Ralphie, a point for Ralphie. Question seven. Uh, which country produces whiskey that is peated by using sheep dung? So they burn the sheep dung to, uh, to peat it, to peat the grain. Uh, and uh, want to know, um, name the whiskey as well. So uh, we're looking, the country is Iceland, Iceland. And the whiskey we're looking for is Flocky, which I think is pronounced like that, Flocky. Uh, probably Elliot Ness' favourite whiskey. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, question eight, which sheep-related whiskey, is this the one that Michael was saying was really tenuous, which sheep-related whiskey was matured in Pinot Noir casks. Well, it was an Ardbeg, but we are looking for blah. How do you say it? Black. Is that it? Like, how do you go back? You can do black, black, black. Yeah, that one. Ardbeg black. Okay, question number nine. Which sheepishly named whiskey is a blend of 16 single malts aged between eight and 20 years? So that's not far off what you were talking about, Steve, with the eight, eight, 18, 18 year olds, really, is it? We're talking about sheep dip, sheep dip. Who would have known? Sheep dip. So we've got 16 single malts in there. Wow, that's a fact that I didn't know, assuming that is a fact. Question 10. Uh, I want to know which Macallan, I actually gave you a bit of a clue, we're looking for which year Macallan, okay, is James Bond's favourite one. There's a bonus point if you can name the film where he tried to shoot it off someone's head. So we're looking for. Macallan 1962, and uh, uh, the movie was Skyfall, so you get a point for each, right? A point for Macallan 1962, and a point for Skyfall. How are you doing? Does it look like you're going to win this week? Question 11, which whiskey was recommended by Charles Dickens in that letter? The whiskey is Glenlivet, the Glenlivet. Uh, this is what he said, so this is just a little excerpt from, from the letter. He said this, a man in Edinburgh, supposed to be unparalleled in his whiskey education, has just sent me rare old Glenlivet. Try the accompanying specimen and drink as heartily as I drink to you. I mean, wow, <laughs> what an endorsement. <laughs> I just love that. I mean, I was, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, some of the bottles are 12 year old. The, the, the older bottles have that little e excerpt of that letter printed on the back, but you don't see them very often. Uh, if you can find one, pick it up, stick it in your collection. Uh, what else have we got here? Question number 12, final question. Which distillery produces the Dragon Range? The Dragon Range, okay, real clue, I think, here in the Dragon Range. If you didn't know it, you can definitely guess it. We're looking for Penderin, okay? Penderin Welsh Whiskey. All right, that is it. Whiskey Geek of the Week quiz done. I'd like you to total up your scores. There are 16 points up for grabs. Put your score in the comments box and let us know how you've done. And hopefully we have a Whiskey Geek of the Week winner for this week. And with a bit of luck, it might even be a new person. So total up your scores. Now... I've uh, got a slight announcement to make, uh, and that is that after next week, I'm changing the regularity of our broadcast. And that has to do with a number of things, and one of them actually has to do with the amount of time that I have available to do this. It's not going to affect the number of competitions. It's not going to affect uh, our spot price competition. It's not going to affect any of that sort of stuff. Um, and, uh, but it's just a question of uh, probably quality over quantity as much as anything else. So we are here next week uh, as usual. And then next week what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, announce uh, in more detail what we have lined up. So I'm going to be changing the frequency of it, but I'm also going to be changing uh, for the better. I'm also going to be changing the actual format. So we're going to have a more structured show with uh, other bits and pieces in there that I know that people have enjoyed. We're definitely going to have our cocktails, all the usual stuff as well. Uh, but I just want to give you fair warning this week that I'm going to be telling you more about that next week. All right, uh, so how did we do? Scores. No scores. I've got nothing in the comments box. None of you have put up any scores whatsoever. That means that if somebody's got one question right, you are a Whiskey Geek of the Week. 
Here we go, here we go. Right, all right, Barry. Barry's put a score up there, 11. A one you gave the answer to one guess. I, I gave the answer, is that right? Did I give the answer to something? Did I, are you joking? Did, did I give the answer to the Charles Dickens one without even realizing it? Is that right? Uh, and to Google. <laughs> You're always honest, Barry. <laughs> um, anyone else? Who else is playing? Give me your scores, please. 11 for Barry. I didn't realize that I'd given the answer out. Did I actually do that? Mm. Uh, Dave, got a seven. Thank you for, oh right, I did, okay. <laughs> You're all saying it now. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I gave out the answer to number 11. Oops! That's how all the cookie crumbles. Uh, Bob saying, can they live it? Kaz is saying yes to number 11. Okay, what scores did the rest of you get? What scores did the rest of you get? <laughs> I joined late and got three, says Steve. But how many did you answer, Steve? If you got three out of three, uh, mind you, I, uh, yeah, I'm just realizing that uh, that's still not even that good because I gave the answer to number 11. So Steve got three uh, at the moment. Uh, Barry's got 11. Sorry, uh, Barry, are you saying you got a score of 11 or that I gave the answer to number? I think you said you got a score of 11. Anyone else? Nobody else playing? Bob, 10, but use Google a lot. <laughs> You guys are just too honest, really. <laughs> You're probably honest. We do this pub quiz, right, uh, with our, our neighbours and our friends. It's run by uh, it's run by one of our our friends, stroke neighbours, and um, uh, he popped up right at the beginning. I don't think he's still with us, but he popped up earlier on. And honestly, some of the scores that come in, I'm sure that that, that uh, Google is used. But I can tell you this: unlike you guys, no one is admitting. <laughs> At all. <laughs> um, Steve, you got the bomb film. The one you gave him black. Okay, fair enough. Kaz, you got 10. Barry did score 11. Okay. Uh, we got two 10s. Got quite a bit of use of Google. I'm guessing Kaz, who seems to have an encyclopedic knowledge of whiskey, potentially didn't use Google as well. Uh, what else? Anybody else? Not too many of you playing here, actually. We really need more of you playing, I think. Otherwise, you guys are putting in a lot of work to, uh, uh, to only have half a dozen people answer your questions. Maybe a lot of you just sort of listen in and, and don't play. Okay, I'm just going to give you a minute or two longer to see if, they, if it comes in. Um, but at the moment, Barry's kind of in the lead, even though there was other bits uh, um, influencing the score. Uh, what else do I need to tell you? Okay, so we know that our spot prize competition as ever get over to the website after the broadcast. It normally takes me about five or ten minutes to update that page, but just let me get the new video on there and then I will update the page. Remember, it is this little tasting set of Talaskers. Uh, tasting set, by the way, don't think that they're 370 CL bottles, they're 350 mil bottles. Um, what else? We got this going out to our spot prize winner this week. Cocktail uh, is back. Uh, still photographs going on as well. And uh, yeah, and uh, remember, if you wish that you were one of the people that could actually pick up one of our amazing whiskey prices every week, you know what to do. Just head over, sign up, become a member, and, uh, and honestly, you've got a very good chance of winning a whiskey with us. All right. I'm going to call it. Uh, Barry, you're the winner. You are the winner. Uh, I don't, I'm not even worrying about whether Google has used a little bit, a lot, or whatever. Um, we're just going to call Barry the winner. I think, Barry, you sort of shared it with Kaz a couple of weeks ago. So, Barry, you know what to do. Send us another one of your headless shots, please. You, oh, Kaz only got nine. If I don't question <laughs> All right. Okay. That's fair enough. That's definitely fair enough. I've got to stop giving away the answers. So Barry, send me one of those headless pictures if you can. Michael got a couple wrong this week. Michael, the, the moment you want to get back in and actually play, you're welcome back in. It's entirely up to you. But good to know that actually Kat, uh, Kat came up with some questions that sort of foxed you this week, which, which, is, um, which is good, which means that with holes in your knowledge, that means that you can continue to dedicate your life to studying about whiskey. 
All right, so well done, Barry. You know what to do. Get a picture over to me, please, when you can. Uh, let me know if you're happy knocking up the questions for, for next week. Um, uh, just sort of give me a thumbs up or, or not about that. And, uh, and then we're good. So look, as ever, delighted that you're uh, with us this week. Next week, remember, we don't only have the cocktails, the whiskey geek, the usual stuff, but we're going to go through these as well. These brand new Ben Reacts, and not only the brand new branding, but we're going to taste them together. We're going to have a bit of fun. And my thought plus the others that were interested, I'm going to look into that whole idea of doing those actual interactive whiskey tastings with you guys. And, uh, um, and if we've got enough people that are interested, then we will look at actually running one of those as well. Anyway, in the meantime, thank you very much. Have a great week. Keep well, stay safe, and I will see you same time, same place next week. Be good.